Good evening from Ocean County Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us for our Wednesday night uh, midweek service. And this is our kids' lesson, so if you have any uh, families with kids that you know, I would encourage you to share it with them, and i give you a minute to get all the kids ready. So we're going to be looking in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Today we're going to be talking about the armor of God. The armor of God. Let's pray and we'll get started. Dear God, I thank you for today and I thank you for all you do for us. And I just, I thank you for saving me, God. And I just thank you for just being there for me and listening to me when I pray. And God, I thank you for just uh, giving me this passage. I pray I just speak it clearly and I pray all the, the kids listening and adults and whoever is listening, God, that it would be a blessing and a help to them. God, I just uh, pray you just give me a wisdom as I preach it in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So today we're going to be going through Ephesians chapter 6 and talking about the armor of God. So does anybody know what armor is? Armor is stuff that soldiers or you know military people put on their body to protect them from different things. And we're going to go through some of that. So, But before we get into it, what did we talk about last week? Does anybody remember? Last week we talked about Jonah. We talked about the lessons from the whale. And Actually, that was two weeks ago. La what, am I messing up here? Joseph. Last week we talked about Joseph. See, I don't even know what day it is. Last week we talked about Joseph and talked about um, having a good attitude. The week before that we talked about Joseph. See, I was just testing you. I knew it the whole time. So this week we're going to talk about Ephesians. We're talking about the armor of God. So make sure you're paying attention and you've got your Bible in front of you because we're going to read about eight verses right now. It says, finally, my brethren, and we're in uh, Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we're going to focus on those different pieces of armor today. So we're going to talk about the armor of God and putting your armor on. But before we talk about that, we have to realize something. In verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Think of somebody who's strong. Did you think about it? If you're a teenage boy, you probably thought of yourself. But think about someone who's really strong. You think of the strongest person you know. Whether it's your older brother or your dad or maybe you saw some really buff guy at the gym. Now think about that compared to God. God is so much stronger than anybody you can think of. And it says here, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. So we're not in the power of our own might, because if we're being honest, we're not that strong compared to God. But we're in the power of his might. So in the power of God's might is how we fight different battles. And we fight our spiritual battles. And I talk about and the power of his might. So God is stronger than anyone. How can we be strong in God's might? You know, how can we be strong in the Lord? Well, the Bible here gives us an easy to follow outline of how to be strong in the Lord. And it talks about putting on our armor. You know, a soldier doesn't go into battle without any armor. I mean, unless he's foolish. But if you have your armor on, and you think of the medieval times, which is we're going to talk about because... That's when this Bible is written, talks about swords and helmets and shields. So think about that. If they didn't have that armor, somebody could just come up and hit them or they could stab them. And without that armor, they're unprotected. So in order to have armor, I mean, in order to be protected, you have to have armor. We're talking about um, the whole armor of God. Now keep reading in verse 11. It says, but on the, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know, did you ever do half of your homework? 
be honest with me. I know you don't have any teachers hovering over you now. Did you ever do, you know, half of an assignment? You know, the Bible here says, put on the whole armor of God. You know, you can't just put on one piece of armor. If a soldier goes out and he puts all his, his you know, he covers up his legs, his shoulders, and he puts his breastplate on, he's got his shield, but he forgets his helmet, you know, he's not very protected. So the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. So remember that. How much of the armor are we putting on? Good. Hopefully you said all of it. The whole armor of God. And I'll skip it down in verse um, 14. It says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So we get to our first point of armor um, before we get there. God has commanded us to put on the armor. He doesn't say, you know, if you want to wear your armor, you know, if you're going into a battle, you're going to put your armor on. So we as Christians battle things every day, whether it's temptation or, you know, wanting to, you know, do something that's wrong. You know, we battle different things and we have to put our armor on. And so it's commanded. God says, put on the armor of God. It doesn't say, you know, if you feel like it, put on on. Or if you have time, you know, maybe put on part of it. No, it says, put on the whole armor of God. It's commanded. It's all inclusive. It's the whole armor of God. And it's victorious. It's how we win our battles. As Christians, you know, we can't win the battle in our might. We have to win the power. We have to win the battle in God's might. And how do we do that? By putting on our armor. So we're going to get to some props here that I brought that I found in the top of the gym. And this is the belt of truth. It even says truth on it. because This is the, you know, children's armor of God. So this is the belt of truth. So we first, in verse 14, it says, having your loins girt about with truth. So what is truth? Say, well, Anthony, it's not telling a lie. Well, that's good. A truth is something that is completely, you know, realistic and it's truthful, obviously. So, the belt of truth. But what is truth? You know, the Bible says that Jesus, well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we see that Jesus is truth. Anything that Jesus said is true. Jesus isn't going to lie to anybody. Well, what else is truth? Does anybody know? It's a simple one. The Bible says in uh, John chapter 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy, uh, through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So when the Bible says, gird your loins up with truth, it's talking about, you know, get a good grasp on the Bible and on Jesus. Because the Bible says that Jesus is truth, and it also says that the Bible is truth. So if they were to say, you know, if someone were to ask you, what is truth? You could tell them, good, you could tell them that the Bible is. So read your Bible. You don't. Know, you know, you can't know the Bible if you don't read the Bible. You're not just going to look at it. Oh, I know the whole Bible. No, it's a big book. You got to read it and study it. You know, that's why in school or Sunday school, we memorize it and we listen to the story. So I'd encourage you read your Bible. Say, Anthony, I, I don't even know how to read. Well, have your parents read you the Bible. So the belt of truth. So we need to know truth. And what's the opposite of truth? We said it before, you know, lying, something that's untruthful. Well, you know, the Bible says that lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. And if you were in my chapel, we remember what abomination is. And something disgusting and putrid to God. And it's just something that God does not like. God hates lying. He doesn't look at it and say, oh, well, that's okay. You had to get out of trouble. No, God hates lying. And the Bible is truth. So if you're going to follow the Bible like you should, you're not going to lie. That's putting on the belt of truth. So Anthony, you say, Anthony, I thought this was about warfare. Well, it is. You put on your belt of truth, you put on your armor, and it helps you not to lie. And when you focus on the truth of the Bible and the truth of Jesus, you'll realize, you know, I shouldn't be lying. And that's a battle. You know, it's a battle to not lie. So when you put on your armor of truth, it helps you not to lie. Let's look into the next one. If you read along with me in verse 14, it says, And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now we see here, dropped it this is the breastplate of righteousness and we in the breastplate of righteousness what is righteousness well righteousness is something you know right it's not wrong it's holy it's it's perfect the jesus is righteousness he is he is always right we talk about someone who is a righteous person they are more likely to do good stuff and to be a good person think about it as something that is good you know, the Bible talks about Jesus putting his righteousness on us and us being saved. And that's a little deeper. But we're just going to focus on always doing right. You know, 
if you're in a battle and you your brother's picking on you or something's going on and you don't want to do a chore that you're supposed to do and you're in a you're in a situation where you have to do right or you can do wrong and if you put on your armor and you realize that you should be doing right and you're wearing the breastplate of righteousness it'll remind you to do right Ephesians 6 in verse 1 same chapter so just go a little bit over into the beginning in verse 1 it says children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right say so I think well I don't like what my parents tell me to do it doesn't matter you're supposed to obey it children obey your prayers in the Lord for this is right now look down in verse 3 it says that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long on the earth so I thought about it this way the breastplate of righteousness the breastplate protects your vitals protects your heart your lungs now obviously doesn't protect your head but without your heart you're not living so it talks about if you're doing right if you're being righteous that you'll live longer. The Bible talks about just a promise, really, of life and living longer if you're righteous. Now, obviously, it doesn't protect you from certain things, but it's just a promise from God that obeying your parents and it will be well with you. So that talks about righteousness. So we're going to review. So what was the first one? If you see it sticking out there, that's the belt of truth. So we put the belt of truth on. It's upside down have the belt of truth, and then we have the breastplate of righteousness. Now, what is the next one as we run through these? The next one is the feet shod. Uh, we'll read it in the Bible. It says in, the, in verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So, Anthony, what does that mean? Well, maybe this will help you understand. So, this is, if you ever played soccer, think of this as a shin guard. So, pretty much it would go right about there. And it would guard the lower part of your legs. And it talks about your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You know, the Bible says, How beautiful are the feet of them that spread the gospel. That's in Romans 10, verse 15. And you say, Anthony, I don't think feet are very beautiful. Well, I don't either, to be honest with you. But if you're using your feet to go and talk to other people about God and talk to other people about Jesus, that's a beautiful thing. And the gospel... Now, this is for everybody. This is all for everybody, but this is really for everybody. The gospel is a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare. Say, so Anthony, you know, there's all this craziness going on. Well, just realize the fact that if you're saved, it's because somebody shared the gospel with you. Somebody put on, you know, they shod their feet with the gospel of peace, and they shared the gospel with you, and it changed your life. The gospel is a life-changing weapon in spiritual warfare. So it talks about the gospel can change your life. In Romans 1.16, it talks about how Paul wasn't unashamed of the gospel. It was the power of God. The power of God to change someone's life is shown in the gospel. Say, Anthony, what's the gospel? Well, the gospel means good news. So it's not bad news and a lot of bad news going around these days. So the good news, I'll give you good news. Good news is that if you're a sinner and you're on your way to hell, you don't have to be. You know, anybody who's done one thing wrong is a sinner. Say, Anthony, I've done plenty of things wrong. Well, I'm, I'm right there with you. But, you know, our sin condemns us to hell, but we don't have to go there. Because Jesus sent his, or God sent his son Jesus to die for us, and he rose again, and he took the penalty for our sin. And all you have to do is accept that payment. Ask God to forgive you and accept the payment of Jesus taking the, your sin penalty. So that's the gospel. That's the gospel of peace, and that's what it's talking about there. Your feet should be used to go and tell people about God. So what's the next one? We'll keep reading in verse 16. Above all, so that means above everything else, taking the shield of faith. So we see here, we have the shield of faith. Wherewith shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So very simply, the shield helps you block the, de the, the devil's darts. And what does that mean? I thought of it this way. The shield of faith. You know, you have faith in God. You trust God. You believe in God. The devil will always try to get you to doubt. He's like, oh, well, I don't know if that part's true. Oh, it's true. We learned about it. The gospel, I mean, the Bible is true. And the devil tries to say, oh, well, maybe your parents aren't right in that sense. No, your parents are right. We're supposed to obey our parents. So the shield kind of blocks the devil from trying to get you to doubt. And that's because we have faith in God and your faith will help you not doubt what God has already said. So don't doubt God. Have faith in God. That's talking about the shield of faith. Now remember, these are all part of putting on the whole armor of God. So the second to last one here, if we keep reading, 
It says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. So I read both of them. Take the helmet of salvation. So you see here we have our helmet. It's got salvation on it. So does anybody know? I've been doing a lot of talking. What, what does salvation mean? Salvation is when somebody gets saved. Well, what does that mean? Saved is when, when you trust Jesus and you ask him to be your savior. It's saved is what we talked about before, believing the gospel. You believe the gospel and you get saved. And that's how you put on your helmet of salvation. You, know, you can't put on any of the armor of God until you're saved. Once you're saved, you can become a soldier of the Lord and you become his child. And so put on the helmet of salvation. Salvation is believing the gospel. You know, we are nothing without the gospel. A soldier is nothing without his helmet. If he, if, especially in back then with, with the arrows and the swords. If a soldier went into battle without his helmet, man, he would have been the first target. He would have been the first guy out of the battle. Because he's, he can't protect his head, his brain, all his functions that he needs. The, you know, we as Christians are nothing without our salvation. You know, I thank God that I'm saved. And that, you know, I was talking to Haley today. And we're like, oh, man, I wish we could have church and, you know, meet and see everybody and hug everybody and have youth group. But, you know, I just told her, you know, Haley, I'm just glad I'm saved. You know, God is still good no matter what. I'm still going to heaven. And, and if you're saved, you're still going to heaven. But I, I challenge you, if you haven't put on the helmet of salvation, if you haven't gotten saved yet, that is the most important decision you'll ever make. We talked about it before. The gospel is life-changing. You know, the God, may, God may have you going through a trial or through this coronavirus just so you can wake up and say, you know, I need God. I need God to save me. I need God to help me through certain things. You know, if you're a kid and you've never been saved before, I encourage you talk to your mom, talk to your dad, and talk to them about being saved. And, you know, just ask some questions. You know, you can ask them any question you want. You know, who's Jesus? You know, what does it mean that I'm a sinner? Just certain things that you may be thinking. Salvation. The helmet of salvation. So what's our last one? Our last one, my personal favorite. Well, they're all my favorite. Is the sword of the spirit. What is the sword of the spirit? Which is, and it tells you right there. What does it say? Well, if you can't, you don't know if you're not looking at it. Look at Ephesians 6, 17. It says the sword of the spirit, which is the word of of God. So what's that? That's this right here. The Bible. The Bible is our sword. You know, a soldier, we talked about, you're not going to go into battle without your armor. Well, you're certainly not going to go into battle without your sword. You know, if you're a Christian and you go to work or somebody's trying to talk to you about your faith, don't ever go to battle without your sword. You know, it's not, no, nah, this isn't to the kids, but it, it's never a wrong thing to go to work and bring your Bible. You know, some of your work may be a battleground. Well, I would encourage you, bring your sword. When you wake up in the morning, don't forget your sword throughout the day. Now, we're going to get off track, and I don't want to, but that's good. Don't forget the Bible. You need the Bible as a soldier needs his sword. It's your lifeline. You're not going to attack the enemy if you don't have a sword. So you shouldn't be able to attack the devil and the, the temptations and the doubts of this life without your Bible. So love your Bible. The Bible is a sword. Turn with me. We're just looking at one extra verse here in Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. I always forget what Hebrews is. There it is. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So what does that mean? That means the Bible is awesome. It means the Bible knows what you're thinking, and when you read it, it's like a mirror. It's like, oh, wow, I'm doing that. That's wrong. I should probably change that. Oh, wow, I don't know what to do with my life. Oh, there's a good verse. It gives you direction. It shows you what you should be doing. It also is your lifeline. Just like we talked about the, this. When you see, say you watch an action movie, and they're fighting, and somebody drops the sword. What do they do? They're fighting. They're trying to get to the sword. Well, that's how it should be with our Bible. If you don't read your Bible for a day, you should be starving for it. You should be looking for it. You know, where's my sword? Where's my lifeline? The Bible will get you through this life. You know, you talk about going into battle. Don't go into battle without your sword. Don't go into battle without your Bible. You know, every day is a battle. So every day you need your sword. We battle sin every day. You know, you're lying if you told yourself you didn't sin today. Everybody battles sin each and every day. Now, it's not a sin to be tempted, but it is a sin to give in to temptation. So how do we beat temptation? With our sword. How did Jesus beat temptation? 
with his sword. He quoted the scripture right back to the devil. So I would encourage you, hold on to your sword. Hold on to the Bible. Read it every day. Learn it. Memorize it. Study it. And that will help you with the battles that we face. That will help you with you know, doing right. And we, what we talked about before, it will help you with you know, knowing the gospel and all of that. So let's do a quick review. I know we went through all six of them, and that's a lot of information, and hopefully the uh, visuals will help you remember it. So what's our first? We'll go backwards. So what did we just talk about? I won't even let you look. You got it. We talked about the Bible. We talked about the sword of the Spirit. So you need your Bible. Hold on to your Bible. It's your lifeline. What else did we talk about? I'm just going to keep grabbing it. We talked about, what is this? You probably can't read that, but what is it? It's the shield of faith. It helps you block the doubts of the devil. And, you know, they use their faith to protect them. You know, a lot of people's faith are under attack in, their, uh, in different countries, even in our own country, different faiths are under attack. I encourage you, hold on to your faith. It, let it protect you. Don't let the devil make you doubt the Bible or what Jesus has told you or even what your parents have told you. Hold on to your faith. What else did we go through? We have the helmet of salvation. So if you're not saved, I encourage you, you've got to put the helmet on before you put the rest of the armor on. It's, it's, a, it's one of the most vital parts of your armor. It protects your head, and it's the helmet of salvation. So make sure you're saved. If you're not, again, contact us, talk to your parents. Salvation is the most important decision you'll ever make. What else is next? We have the feet shod with the gospel of peace. Use your feet to tell other people. Now, not your actual feet. That would be really weird. Use your feet to go and tell other people about Jesus. You know, we use our feet for plenty of things. We walk, you know, well, if you're like me, you take a lot of walks recently that you didn't usually take, which is good. I think you should take walks. And, you know, you walk around the store, you walk around your house. Well, I encourage you, you know, walk and tell people about Jesus. What else did we learn? We've got plenty of things here. And then we have the breastplate of righteousness. You know, do right. It's never okay to do something wrong. It's never okay to disobey your parents. The Bible says, children, obey your parents and Lord, for this is, you said right, you got it right. So what was our last thing? Does anybody remember? The first thing we went over today, and that is the belt of truth. So the belt of truth. Talk about, you know, the Bible says, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So what does that mean? You're never going to get to God unless you go through Jesus. So I encourage you, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I'd encourage you, or maybe if you're struggling with it, go to God. Ask Him to save you. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Look in the Bible. We talked about it. It's your sword. Read it every day. There should never a day go by when you don't open up your Bible. It's your lifeline. It's, your, it's what you charge into battle with, confident that you can take down the enemy because you have your sword. So I encourage you, read your Bible. If you're not saved, ask your parents or, you know, message us here. And we're here for you. We love you and we're praying for you. And hopefully that was an encouragement to you. Hopefully you remember at least one of them. You think to yourself, you know, I'm going to do right because I remember the breastplate of righteousness or, you know, whatever it may be. You know, maybe you even have that set at home. I remember I had that set as a kid. And I used to wear it. Talked about it. I talked about me actually trying to wear it now. It would not work out. But... <laughs> So think about it. The armor of God. It's what goes you take into battle with you. And are you ready for battle? Let's pray. God, I thank you for all you've done for us. And God, I thank you for how much you've taught me through this. And God, I pray that all the kids listening, the parents and whoever, God, that we would just, we would put on our armor on each and every day. God, that we would say no to sin and that we would fight the devil, God, and that we would do what's right. God, that we would hold on to our swords and that we would know the truth and God, I pray that you would just help us with that each and every day. God, not a day goes by that's not a battle. And I pray that we would battle our sin nature and the devil each and every day. God, I love you. I thank you for all the things that you've given us to fight this battle. God, I thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And we're just going to keep on rolling to the next uh, preaching service at 6 o'clock. So don't turn it off. Stay tuned. Get a water, whatever you need.